Hi, I'm Roger from Kainka Labs and today it's the second part of our series about our relay interface uh, REST. Today we take a look at the hardware, uh, the external hardware, how the connections are made, um, what you have to consider when you are using the relays or the open collector outputs and uh, how it all works. We take a look at the schematic and explain um, the innards uh, of the relay interface. And well now, let's start. So let's take a closer look at uh, the single components of the relay interface. Well, first of all, you can see the terminals of uh, the relay. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, single point single pole single throw normally open contact which is of course self-explaining it's the standard kind you want to connect a relay contact i'll show you how it looks under the hood that's the bare uh, pcb without the cover and here you can see the eight power relays and uh, perhaps you can read the rating they are rated for up to 8 amps at uh, up to 250 volts mains voltage. But of course you should be sure what you're doing when you really want to switch um, mains connected loads. First of all, because the terminals are not touch protected. So if you put the mains voltage here at the terminals to switch them, uh, you should either cover all the relay interface with a touch protected cover or um, anyway you should let the wiring be done by an electrician or a qualified personnel um, otherwise uh, you can hurt yourself or get killed so be careful when switching main, main slots anyway it's rated for mains volt switching and um, if you want to switch the max current of 8 amps with a DC load, well, there you should be careful. You cannot switch the same DC voltage as AC voltage. You cannot switch 250 volts or 400 volts rectified DC. You can only switch th up to 30 volts DC, especially when you take the full current capability of 8 amps. The reason for this I will explain in another uh, video, in a later video. Um, same as what is the maximum load uh, concerning watts or kilowatts that you can switch. Well, if you multiply 8 amps max current with 250 volts AC max voltage, you get of course 2 kilowatts. That's the absolute maximum load you can switch. But this is true only for resistive loads like um, heaters or th something like that. If you want to switch inductive loads like a motor, for example, uh, the maximum uh, power you can switch is much less. Uh, to be on the safe side, you should only switch an inductive load of not more than 200 watts. The reason for this I will also explain in another a video where we take a closer look at the innards of uh, our relay interface. So let's take back the complete interface. Uh, next you can see is the uh, power supply. Um, as you can read it needs 12 volts, even unregulated uh, DC voltage and for one relay interface, you don't don't need more than 100 milliamps. So practically every 12 volt wall adapter or power supply will be enough to supply uh, enough current, even when all eight relays are switched on. Uh, but there's one thing you should be aware of, which of especially of these cheap switch mode power supplies you can buy for a few dollars everywhere like this one. Well, you have here one with an adjustable voltage from 3 to 12 volts, which is already uh, set to 12 volts. And if we take a look at the rating, it can deliver up to, I think, uh, 
500 or 600 milliamps so this would be enough uh, even if you uh, cascade some relay interfaces you just have to multiply the number of relay interfaces uh, in, in uh, you connect in series with uh, 100 milliamps so this one would be sufficient for up to six um, uh, serialized relay interfaces but these cheap wall adapters also come with a cheap plug usually it's a, an interchangeable adapter which can be uh, connected in in two different positions depending on uh, which kind of um, which kind of plug you really have and you already can see that I have difficulties to put it back again I would not recommend this ones, especially because they have no no safe contact inside, no spring contact or something like that. Uh, so in critical applications, I would never use one of these cheaper ones. If you spend one or two dollars or euros more, you get nearly the same one. And first of all, uh, this has a fixed voltage of 12 volts, so uh, you never can uh, set it to the wrong voltage. Secondly, it has a fixed plug, so you never can get uh, contact problems uh, or reverse voltages um, by uh, connecting it wrongly, and uh, it never can get loose. And you, you will not be able to see this, but it has a little spring contact inside and this gives a 100 percent safe connections of course uh, we also took this uh, kind of wall adapter into our online shop uh, because we are really content with it and we never had uh, any complaints with this one uh, so i just mentioned well what happens when you uh, accidentally put uh, the um, plus uh, connection to the outside which means reverse polarity well it, it, do, it do, of course it does then the relay interface doesn't work but it doesn't do any harm because we have a reverse protection diode inside I just can show you sitting here so n nothing can it cannot do any harm if you um, uh, connect the wrong polarity to the relay interface. Um, if you cascade the relay interface with, which I'll show you later in detail, with uh, this little interconnect from data out to data in, uh, you don't have to use um, a single uh, supply uh, you don't have to use separate supplies on each relay interface but uh, the data connection not only uh, transmits the data to the next relay interface but it also carries uh, the voltage so you only need one voltage supply even in cascading uh, more relay interfaces so let's put it out again so now let's take a look at these two connectors which uh, are designated as data in and data out they are uh, standard six pin modular jacks and uh, even if uh, the arrows suggest that this one here is for data in only and this one for data out well in fact all of the lines are parallel so that it doesn't matter uh, which one you use for data in and data out um, you get supplied with uh, your relay interface with this cable which on the one side uh, connects to the modular uh, jack and on the other side has the standard uh, DB9 female connector which connects to your standard DB9 male connector which should be uh, available at your PC on, on the back plane of your PC as the serial a uh, COM port connection, but many modern PC PCs don't have any more uh, serial hardware serial components, so you might think, but look it up into the manual of your motherboard 
uh, because uh, even modern PCs usually do have um, hardware serial connection, a COM port. Uh, it only, uh, w w the only thing that misses is this little adapter cable uh, which plugs into a usually 2 by 5 pin header on your mainboard um, and on the other side uh, uh, slips into the slot of your uh, back plane. So uh, this is only what you need and look it up if it's not even, even uh, in the box of your mainboard. Otherwise you can buy this little connection cables on eBay or somewhere else for a few dollars. And uh, this is the easiest way um, to use a hardware serial COM port on your PC. Uh, you won't get, of course, this on your laptop, but either if you're using a laptop or you really don't have a hardware uh, serial COM port, then you have to use such an USB to serial adapter. Uh, there are many types available for a few dollars. Usually with our relay interface all of them should work, but uh, we have other interfaces where we have experienced difficulties with, with cheap uh, adapters, because in some of our interfaces we are using up to eight of the uh, defined lines of the RS-232 standard. Uh, here we only need um, TXD to transmit um, the commands to the relay interface. There's even no back channel, uh, so if the uh, TXD line is working, then it should work. But if you want to be sure on the sure on the safe side, and uh, um, you want to use it for other interfaces, then buy either this one from Digitus. It, it works because it has the de facto standard uh, chip, the FTDI FT232R. Uh, which is uh, used in, in many USB to serial uh, interfaces. And of course, you can get it on our online shop and uh, or at somewhere else. So, let's get back to the relay interface itself. So, you can not only get the finished um, relay interface in this version, you can also get the bare PCB uh, to build up your own. If, you, if it's not listed in our online shop, uh, send us an email uh, because we don't have it always uh, listed. And there's still a third possibility. Uh, let's take a look back under the hood, how it looks like. Um, you can get a special version without the relays, but where the driver chips, the ULN 2803A, um, is connected to the outputs and by this way you can drive direct loads um, up to 18 volts and up to 500 milliamps max for one channel but not more than 0.8 amps for all channels uh, together. Uh, this uh, can be helpful in situations where you want to direct, where you don't want to use relays, but want to drive directly from uh, from the power input, which in this case doesn't have to be 12 volts, but it can be anything between 9 and 18 uh, volts. And if you want to use uh, the power from the power supply input, directly driving loads at the output. Uh, the ULN 2803A has open collector outputs, uh, but uh, for not shorting it out by accident, uh, we will um, place 10 ohms resistors uh, to protect it from uh, shortcuts or from too high current demands. So also, if this version is not listed in our online shop, uh, just write us an email or drop us a note. Uh, you can get it by special demand. So let's start with the power supply. Uh, the positive power input goes through this uh, reverse protection diode to a standard 7805 voltage regulator and the power LED with the current limiting resistor. Of course, this central piece is this microcontroller. We choose an 80 tiny 2213 
because it's uh, fully sufficient for our purposes. Um, we have uh, the quartz oscillator here. Uh, you may wonder why it has such an uneven frequency of 4.1 megahertz. Uh, that's because uh, with this frequency you can easily divide down to the standard baud rates of the serial interface. And uh, this line here is the TXD, the transmit line for, from the serial connections coming here from the standard 6-pin modular inputs. And here you also can see that really both data in and data out jacks are completely wired in parallel so that it doesn't matter where you connect them. So uh, this resistor here is for keeping the line low in case of uh, no serial connection is uh, connected to the input jack. And this is a current limiting resistor to avoid any voltage spikes coming from the outside world. So here we have the, uh, uh, the pin that goes to the sync line. Um, we again have a current limiting resistor and this line usually is uh, high and can also be externally pulled low to allow for external um, uh, starting the programming uh, sequence via a uh, normally closed push button or switch uh, or by, a, an, by an NPN transistor which uh, when it uh, has a positive input voltage at the base pulls the sync line low and also starts the sequence. So and here we have uh, the, well, let's call it the power side. We have, a, a, again, eight current limiting resistors for the Darlington driver and ULN2803, which is a standard IC for power outputs. Uh, it has eight TTL and CMOS compatible Darlington stages. And what's important, it has uh, so-called freewheeling diodes uh, pulled to the, which are all connected with their cathodes here and which are pulled to the positive supply voltage. That's for when the outputs are switching inductive loads like the, uh, like the coil of the relays. Uh, there could be an inductive voltage spike be generated when the relay is switched off and the freewheeling free diodes they safely uh, lead this uh, voltage spike to the positive supply rail. So, and finally, we have the uh, LEDs uh, to show the state of um, each relay. And as you can see, uh, when a Darlington switch, it, switch is on, it pulls its output to low. And that, because of that, uh, we had to use the, the LEDs in this way. And well, here we have the eight relays. And as I already told you, uh, you can get the relay interface without the relays, but uh, then uh, the eight outputs of the um, Darlington driver are directly, no, not directly, they are connected via 10 ohms resistors, also for current limiting to the outputs together with the positive supply voltage in the neighboring uh, pin. And that way you can switch, instead of relay switched uh, loads, uh, you can directly switch small DC loads uh, directly from the internal uh, power supply. Uh, which in that case can be anywhere between, let's say, uh, eight and a half volts and 24 volts. So that was it. Uh, not much in it. Uh, the, all the functionality is here in the microcontroller. And, uh, well, last thing is the auto power on reset RC uh, uh, combination which uh, res uh, resets uh, the microcontroller when power is turned on and well 
that was it. So that was it again for today. Um, I hope you liked it. If it was interesting for you, then uh, give it a thumbs up or leave a comment down below. And uh, there you also find, as always, links to our forum where you can place questions or suggestions. If you have uh, already an application or an idea for an application, we also would welcome to share with us. And well, next time uh, we'll take a look at the software that we supply and the protocol for transferring data and programming the device so that you can write your own device, uh, your own program, uh, no matter if it's on your PC, on your Apple, on your Linux uh, computer, or on your microcontroller, because as you saw, the only thing you have to have is one line to transmit serial data, and uh, it's quite simple, and next time we'll see how simple it is. So. Bye, see you next time.